Hello, and welcome to The Coachman. For today's reading, we're going to be headed over to sunny Spain, but a very specific region, which is awesome, which is Catalan. Uh, if you don't know much about Catalan, just check out um, Barcelona. And that is actually the Catalan region. Um, it's a, I think, from my, be my best understanding, Catalan is, is a region of Spain, like surrounding like Barcelona and all this stuff. They do have speak Spanish and whatever, but there's like a different like Catalan, which it sounds different. I've never really heard it, even though I've been to Spain. But um, for me, like I only know it, link it to Barcelona and the uh, Barcelona FC, the football club there. So that's the only thing I really, really reason why I know about it and being in Barcelona. Like it's just a lovely, lovely culture that, you know, I'm going to be definitely getting up uh, into more. But this is actually a story by An Andrew Langs. And it's called The Water of Life, Catalan Fairy Tale. Three brothers and one sister lived together in a small cottage, and they loved one another dearly. One day, the eldest brother, who had never done anything but amuse himself from sunrise to sunset, said to the rest, Let us all work hard, and perhaps we shall grow rich and be able to build ourselves a palace. And his brothers and sister answered joyfully, yes, we will all work. So they fell to working with all their might. So at last, they became rich and were able to build themselves a beautiful palace. And everyone came from miles around to see its wonders and to say how splendid it was. No one thought of finding any faults till at length an old woman who had been walking through the rooms with a crowd of people suddenly exclaimed, yes. It is a splendid palace, but there is still something it needs. We all know this person, and they be drinking that hard haterade. They love to just point out that one thing that's off. Who cares? It still looks good. And what may that be? A church. When they heard this, the brothers set to work again to earn some more money. But when they had gotten enough, they set, set about building a church, which should be as large and beautiful as the palace itself. And after the church was finished, greater numbers of people than ever flocked to see the palace and the church and vast gardens and magnificent halls. But one day, as the brothers were as usual doing the honors to their guest, an old man turned to them and said, Yes, it is all most beautiful but there is still something it needs. Sounds like a married couple that need to go kick rocks. And what may that be? A pitcher of the water of life, a branch of the tree, uh, wait, a branch of the tree, the smell of whose flowers gives eternal beauty and the talking bird. And where am I to find all those? Go to the mountain that is far off yonder. And you will find what you seek. Man, I'm sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab this old man by the back of his neck. And I'm kicking him out of my castle. Telling me to go find this stuff where I have a beautiful palace. And tree. Nah, kick rocks. Get out. Now you're done. But I guess these are better people than I am. After the old man had bowed politely and taken farewell of them, the eldest brother said to the rest, I will go in search of the water of life and the talking bird, and the tree of beauty. But suppose some evil things befall you, asked his sister. How shall we know? You are right, he replied. I had not thought of that. Then they followed the old man and said to him, My eldest brother wishes to seek for the water of life, and the tree of beauty, and the talking bird, that you tell him are needful to make our palace perfect. But how shall we know, if anything, Befall him. So the old man took them uh, took them a knife and gave it to them, saying, "Keep this carefully, and as long as the blade is bright, all is well. But if the blade is bloody, then know that evil has befallen you." Well, hold on, Duke. Does that mean like if it gets bloody because I killed some something that was coming after me, or it just turns bloody? See, this is what you got to do. When you come upon stuff like this, you always got to ask questions. I may look suspicious or sound suspicious or whatever, 
but I'm asking questions. <laughs> the brothers thanked him and departed and went straight to the palace where they found the young man making ready to set out for the mountain where the treasures he longed for lay hid. And he walked and he walked and he walked till he had gone a great way. And there he met a giant. See what I'm saying? He stabs the giant in the toe. Now it's bloody and all of a sudden it's evil. Come on, man. You got to think about this. Can you tell me how much farther I have, I have still to go before I reach that mountain yonder? And why do you wish to go there? I am seeking the water of life, the talking bird, and a branch of the tree of beauty. Many have passed by seeking those treasures, but none have ever come back. And you will never come back either unless you mark my words. Follow this path, and when you reach that mountain, you will find it covered with stones. Do not stop to look at them, but keep on your way. As you go, you will hear scoffs and laughs behind you. It will be the stones that mock you. Do not heed them. Above all, do not turn around. If you do, you will become as one of them. Walk straight until you get to the top, and then take all you wish for. The young man thanked him for his counsel and walked and walked and walked till he reached the mountain. And as he climbed, he heard behind him scoffs and jeers, but he kept his ears steadily close to him or closed. At last, the noise grew so loud that he lost patience and he stooped to pick up a stone to hurl into the midst of the clamor. Then suddenly his arm seemed to stiffen. and The next moment, He was a stone himself. See, when people sometimes when people give you advice, just do it. Because it might sound outrageous, but sometimes it works. Don't follow everybody's advice though. You know what I mean? Like that drunk like that uncle, yeah, that loves like wearing his wife beaters and lets a a cigarette hang out of his mouth. I mean, listen to him about like something, but no no, not deep stuff. No, no. Pass up. Or even that ant, you know what I mean? That like walks around in a moo and whatnot, you know, in house shoes sliding. It's like might want to pass up on that one. That day, his sister, who thought her brother's steps were long in returning, took out the knife and found the blade was red as blood. Oh, okay, so he doesn't have, so the brother doesn't have it. The sister does to know if like anything's wrong. Okay, then she cried out to her brothers that something terrible had come to pass. I will go find him. I will go and find him, said the second, and he went. And he walked, and he walked, and he walked, till he met the giant and asked him if he had seen a young man traveling towards the mountain. And the giant answered, yes, I have seen him pass, but I have not seen him come back. The spell must have worked upon him. Then what can I do to disenchant him and find the water of life, the talking bird, and a branch of the tree of beauty? Follow this path, and when you reach the mountain, you will find it it covered with stones. Do not stop to look at them, but climb steadily on. Above all, heed not the laughs and scoffs that will arise on all sides, and never turn around. And when you reach the top, you can then take all you desire. The young man thanked him for his counsel and set out for the mountain. But no sooner did he reach it, Then loud jests and jibes broke out on every side and almost deafened him. For some time, he let them rail and he pushed boldly on till he had passed the place which his brother had gained. Then suddenly the thought that among the scoffing sounds he heard his brother's voice. He stopped and looked back and another stone was added to the number. See, that's what you don't do, man. Like, if you're looking for something, keep looking but don't go backwards until the end. Excuse me, had to get me a little sip sip. Meanwhile, the sister, meanwhile, the sister left at home was counting the days when her two brothers should return to her. The time seemed long and would be hard to say how often she took out the knife and looked at it polished blade to make sure that this one at least was still safe. 
The blade was always bright and clear. Each time she looked, she had the happiness of knowing that all is well. Till one evening, tired and anxious, as she frequently was at the end of the day, she took it from its drawer, and behold, the blade was red with blood. Her cry of horror brought, the, brought her, young, her youngest brother to her, and unable to speak, she held out the knife. I will go, he said. So he walked, and he walked, and he walked, until he met the giant and asked, Have two young men making for yonder mountain passed this way? And the giant answered, Yes, they have passed by, but they never came back. And by this, I know that the spell has befallen upon them. Then what must I do to free them and to get the water of life and the, the talking bird and the branch of the tree of beauty? Go to the mountain, which you will find so thickly covered with the stones that you will hardly be able to place your feet and walk straight forward, turning neither to the right hand nor to the left and paying no need to the laughs and scoffs which will follow you, till you reach the top, and then you may take all that you desire. The man thanked the giant for his counsel, and set forth to the mountain. And when he began to climb, there burst forth all around him a storm of scoffs and jeers. But he told the giant's words, and looked neither to the right, to the right hand, nor the left, to the mountaintop lay straight before him. A moment now, and he would have gained it, when, through the groans and yells, he heard his brother's voice. That would be wicked, though. You're looking for these dudes, and all of a sudden you hear their voices, like, faintly, and like a whole, like, scatter fool. You know, it'd be kind of odd. And there was one stone the more. Just couldn't help it. Just couldn't help it. And all this while, his sister was pacing up and down the palace, hardly letting the life out of her hand, and dreading what she knew she would see and what she did see. The blade grew red before her eyes, and she said, Now it is my turn, and this I love. Gotta love when baby dolls just like, Yo, I got this. I'm gonna get them. So she walked and she walked and she walked till she came to the giant and prayed him to tell her if he had seen three young men pass that may, be, may seek that way, seeking the distant mountain. I have seen them pass, but they have never returned. And by this, I know that the spell has fallen upon them. And what must I do to set them free and to find the water of life? and the talking bird, and a branch of the trees of beauty. You must go to that mountain, which is so full of stones that your feet will hardly find a place to tread. And as you climb, you will hear a noise as if all the stones in the world were mocking you. But pay no heed to anything you may hear. And once you gain the top, you have gained everything. The girl thanked him for his counsel and set out for the mountain. And scarcely had she gone a few step upwards when cries and screams broke forth around her, and she felt as if each stone she trod on was a living thing. But she remembered the words of the giants and knew not what had befallen her brothers, and kept her face steadily towards the mountaintop, which grew nearer and nearer every single moment. That's what I'm talking about. I'm like, you go ahead, girl. Show them what you, you know, I mean, show them what you're working with. But as she mounted, the clamor increased sevenfold. High above them all rang the voices of her three brothers. But the girl took no heed. And at last, her feet stood upon the top. Then she looked around and saw, lying in a hollow, the pool of the water of life. And she took the brazen pitcher that she had brought with her and filled it to the brim. By the side of the pool stood the three stood the tree of beauty with the talking bird on one of his one of his bows. But she caught the bird and placed it in a cage and broke off one of the branches. After that she turned and went 
joyfully down the hill again, carrying her treasures. But her long climb had tired her out, and the brazen pitcher was very heavy. And as she walked, a few drops of the water spilt on the stones. And as it touched them, they changed it to young men and maidens, crowding about her to give thanks for their deliverance. So, she learnt by this how the evil spell might be broken, and she carefully sprinkled every stone till there was not one left. Only a great company of youths and girls who followed her down the mountain. It's like she's a pie piper of like people. Huh. Okay. When they arrived at the palace, she did not lose a moment in planting the branch of the tree of beauty and watering it with the water of life. And the branch shot up into a tree and was heavy with flowers and the talking bird nested in its branch. Now the fame of these wonders was noised abroad and the people flocked in great numbers to see the three marvels. And the maiden who had won, who had won, and among the sightseers came the king's son who would not go till everything was shown him until he had heard how it all happened. And the prince admired the strangeness and beauty of the treasures in the palace, but more than all, he admired the beauty and courage of the maiden who had brought them, who had brought them there. I'm not going to lie, there's nothing like a strong woman. Oh, strong and beautiful, but strong woman. Shout-outs to y'all lovely ladies. There's one in Mississippi who knows who she is. That's my strong lady herself. So he went home and told his parents and gained their consent to wed her, to wed her for his wife. Then the marriage was celebrated in the church adjoining the palace. Then the bridge room, oh, oh, sorry, the bridegroom took her to his home where they lived happily ever after. So I hope you guys remember, whatever you do, keep your eyes front. Don't look to your left hand or your right hand. But keep looking straight. But when you do return, you know what I mean, back here, or at least until you return back here, I hope you take care. <laughs>